Tonight, we had the New York Knicks facing the Toronto Raptors at home. And tonight, you know, we need the New York Knicks to continue that winning streak that they were on. And we always know that the Toronto Raptors give us. They always give us a problem. And we always struggle when it comes to defending home court. But you know what? I went into this game feeling a little optimistic, thinking that the Knicks were going to be surprising us today, giving us something special on MLK Day. The guys gave us a solid, strong third quarter going into the fourth. Fourth quarter comes around, you're like, all right, all right, Knicks, if you do, Knicks are doing this. We're going to get a dub today. We're feeling pretty good. But then, just as you think, just as you think this, this game was going to go in the Knicks' direction, this team, my feelings, cardiac Knicks started to settle in. Tor the, the Toronto Raptors started they started to come back. They started to make that push to keep, this, to keep things going. We, had, we saw them run the offense through Scotty Barnes. But R.J. Barrett, R.J. Barrett said, I'm not going to go tonight quietly. Comes out, goes coast to coast to tie this game after Fred Van Vliet hits back-to-back -back threes to tie it all up. R.J. goes coast to coast, gets that emphatic slam going into overtime. You're feeling good. You're feeling hyped. You think the Knicks can go in here? Can, can, can eat this one out? No, they, could, they weren't. Overtime, Brunson runs with court, misses, misses the go-ahead three-point to, to win the game, and the Knicks would ultimately lose 123-121. to 121. Oh, what a heartbreaker, guys. What a heartbreaker. I was ready to come in here with optimism. Had to jump out the window again. But this is, this is, this, this is the life of being a Knicks fan. We can't. Comes down to trying to close out games. You know, Toronto Raptors are just a team that, that, they're just a thorn in our butts, man. Thorn in our butts. But this one's up there, man. This one, this was a tough loss. It was a physical, physical game. Like, um, I know a lot of people are going to be very upset about, you know, some calls, you know, um, that maybe we didn't get. But for overall, I felt like the refs let both teams play. You know, maybe play a little too much. <laughs> you know, it, 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 and maybe there was some calls that I was like, okay, that, that should have been called and all that. But you know, I felt like it was, you know, in my opinion, I felt like you know, uh, officiated fairly, fairly, you know, well on both sides. But uh, just a tough, just a tough loss, man. Tough loss. I mean, Fred Van Vliet was just, you know, when he gets hot, he gets hot, and it felt like we just couldn't stop him. And then. Um, it, you know, 10 point lead in the fourth quarter. I felt like we had that. We had that in the bag. Like, um, and then we, we just, we let our guard down in the fourth quarter and just, you know, um, just couldn't get it done. And you said Scotty Barnes making plays on the post, you know, um, cause you, you know, he's not going to kill you from the outside shooting or any of that. Um, but his, his passing was the one thing I think people love coming out of Florida state. And he showed that a lot today and he kind of killed us in that high post you know, with his passing, kind of being that playmaker from the top. Because they really don't have playmakers. Fred Van Vliet's not a playmaker and all that. So they let Scotty Barnes, you know, be able to create. And he was able to find, you know, OG wide open, Fred Van Vliet open and all that, and Pascal and all that. So, you know, that fourth quarter really, really hurt us big time. And then, um, you know, uh, just just a tough one. Just a tough one overall, man. To your point, Chris, getting back to your point, yeah, it was, it was, it was a tough – it was a tough fourth quarter, man. And I know that the question is – Bench minutes, man. You know, we're, 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 we're going to, you can't, we can't continue to shy away from it. You know, tonight we have Quickly with 21, McBride with six, Hartenstein with 16, Obi Toppin with 11. And conversely, you know, the Raptors are also known for playing their stars a lot of minutes as well. If you haven't yeah, checked bench didn't do anything either, yeah. Yeah, yeah, their bench didn't do anything either. Make sure if you haven't checked it, you still go back to hear some good, the good uh, storyline interview questions with Will Wu, who covers the Toronto Raptors for Sportsnet, which is their WFAN over in Canada. Make sure to go check that out. One of the game previews that I did. And as he talked about, Nick Nurse is similar to Tom Thibodeau when it comes to defense and playing the starters a lot of minutes. And if you look to what the Raptors did, it was 18 minutes for Boucher. It was uh, Hernan Gomez with seven minutes. You had Prince, uh, Precious Achua with 20. And you had Malachi Flynn with three. So... It kind of evens out when you look at the bench, and this is all, all a starters affair. And for the Knicks, it was, though, a back-to-back, -back, right? You had Randall, who played 40-plus minutes yesterday. He's playing another 40-plus minutes again today. Obviously, this game went into overtime, so more minutes were tacked on there. But 
you start looking at this bench, man, and if the Knicks really want to continue with this season uh, and being able to compete, they're going to need somebody off the bench because, or figure out a way to get these guys involved because this isn't it. You know, I mean, quickly, yeah, had the most with 14 points off the bench, but McBride gave you zero. You had Hartenstein with two. Uh, Obi Toppin had five points. He went two for four from the field, hit his lone three. And I, I, six I'm, guys. Six guys. That's pretty much it. It, it really is just six guys. And, you know, how sustainable is it for the rest of the season? It's not because once you get – I know guys shorten their rotations once it gets to crunch time in the playoffs, but if you're going to have guys that are exhausted by the time that they even get there, playoffs, playing, whatever you want to call it, this is not the way to have a good, sustainable season. This team, let's be honest, this team misses Alec Burks. This team misses an <laughs> Alec Burks type guy. Like, let's just be honest. Like, people forget he closed a lot of games for us. I'm not saying Alec Burks is the key to a championship, but we don't have any wing depth on this team. We really don't. It's Emmanuel quickly and nothing. We're going to make some trades, I'm assuming. Obi's got to get some minutes. I don't like he's he's not in a groove. Like he's not doing anything because he's not in a groove at all whatsoever. He gets like five minutes a night. Yeah, he guys are gassed at the end of games. That's why we're blowing double digit leads because the starters are playing forty minutes. They got tired legs. I mean, to be honest, I, I I've been looking and I don't know who we can get with the salaries that we have. I mean, you can't like what are our what are our tradable guys on the bench? We got Hartenstein, Cam. I mean, De Derek and Fournier, but they're trying to send Derek somewhere that's, like, beneficial for him. Right. Uh, I mean, Duarte's always hurt. I don't think, I don't think the Nets are going to send TJ Warren anywhere. I don't – maybe maybe Cameron, uh, Cameron Johnson from Phoenix, but I don't, I don't know if they're going to give him up either to get that – to help get some wing, wing defense. But I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's really a match – a match for a trade for us to get the wing depth that we really need at this point because we have Fournier sitting on the bench making $18 million a year to do nothing. You would think, you would think that the guy, like, you, you need some scoring off the bench. You think you go to it, you got somebody on the bench, but very rigid, man. Very, yeah. very rigid. I, and, and as much as I would like to see it happen, the reality is that this coach, uh, didn't want it from the get-go. <laughs> no, he had exactly. a report not too long ago how they're trying to help him find a new team. Mm -hmm. But Cam would help, man. He would help off the bench for sure. Uh, Alec Burks, man. <laughs> <sighs> I think we're. I think we're. We've. we've uh, we're. We're past our Alex Burks uh, being a Knicks status. There is a report by Bleacher Report. Alex Caruso. He's not necessarily a wing. But he is another guard that could come off the bench. And if I'm looking at anybody right now, the guy with the least amount of minutes today is Deuce McBride. Six minutes. Hasn't really been as impactful as he was when, uh, as when he first came into the rotation. Yeah, definitely. But, but, what, are your but what are your thoughts? On Alex Caruso, I mean, uh, it's a solid option. It probably won't cost you much. You know, he's someone that could defend. And uh, and do some things, you know, offensively. But you know, um, I, I would try to look for someone more impactful. Like I, I've been saying this name for a while, but like I'm in a Malik Beasley type, because a guy mm -hmm. coming off the bench that could give you seventeen twenty a game. Like that's someone I feel like the Knicks need to try to target. Someone a microwave scorer who could just go in there and get you a bucket on the second unit, along with a man you quickly. Um, I think that's someone that they should try to get. I know he's been in rumors. Uh, with Cleveland, I believe, because um, Cleveland needs a wing. So that's what I'm saying. It's going to be expensive to try to get these guys because, you know, you, Cleveland's going to go after a guy like that. There's going to be plenty of teams going after players like that. So um, those, I think that's someone they should try to get. How many times are we going to watch the Knicks up by 10 with four minutes left blow these stupid leads? It's unbelievable. It happens every single time. Yeah. Um, even when they win, they blow a 10-point lead, but they win by two. Brunson needs more help, man. He needs more help down the stretch, this guy. He's only 6'1", man. What ends up happening is these guys, because Nick Nurse is actually a real coach, right? He's like a tactician, mm. like a real coach. So he realizes that Brunson is their only weapon down the stretch. So he puts OG yeah. 
OG on him, seven inches taller than him, or Pascal on him, right? And Tom Thibodeau, instead of being a real coach and playing that chess game, he just goes to the same nonsense that he's been doing every single time, and it doesn't work. Any normal coach would be like, okay, wow, OG's guarding Jalen Brunson? Hmm, that means Fred Van Vliet is someone guarding someone significantly taller than him. Why don't we hunt that matchup out and at least draw a foul or something like that or get a double team and kick it out? But no, Tom Thibodeau doesn't want to do that because he's so hard-headed and he has no offensive creativity whatsoever. And he relies on, you know, a prime Derrick Rose or, you know, a COVID <laughs> Randall to take him anywhere. So, you know, I think, I think, I think, Tibbs, I think Tibbs is the biggest problem right now facing this team. But to your point, or to, to what you guys said, you know, we'd have no superstar. You know, the reason why Jalen Brunson's not a superstar is because he's only 6'1". He's not, like, you know what I mean? He's, he, he's not John Morant. He can't just, like, blow past some guy 6'8 and then dunk on a 7-footer, right? Mm -hmm. He relies on his craftiness and his skills, and that's just not going to work. That's just not going to work, um, you know, against these long athletic teams, especially come down the playoffs, right? I think we, this record is a little inflated, hmm. you know? Why do you say that? Because we haven't played one single team with their best two players ever. We would have lost to, we would have lost to Denver if Jokic played. We would have lost to Philly early in the season if Embiid and Harden played. Like we've we've gotten really lucky on the injury front. Granted, I know Brunson was out for a couple of games. I don't see the need to get a Kyle Kuzma or anyone else bench scoring because I feel like our three best players are all isolation shoot first players. <laughs> you know, the yeah. Knicks are at their the, the Knicks it. are at their Yeah, the Knicks are at their best when Julius Randle's like catching the ball at like the elbow and he's driving to the lane and he kicks it out to Grimes for three. I think we should just stay pat, man. Just stay pat. Like if you can make a cheap, cheap upgrade, do it, I guess. But don't trade the picks for Zach Levine or don't do anything crazy. Yeah, no, no, See what no. happens. No, definitely not. Definitely yeah. Not. Yeah. Just, nah. At the end of the day, if you're trying to really win in the playoffs and like we're obviously not going to win a chip, but if you're trying to win the first round series, like someone's going to have to play Someone's going to have to help Jalen Brunson down the stretch of these games because it's not going to be exactly. Randall. And Thibodeau's not going to put them in a position. isn't proven to play that chess match. It's RJ got to step it up, man. He's the only hope right now. If RJ steps it up, he's the only hope that they could close out games. But right now, it's becoming a, a real issue, man. So, uh, but salute to Knicks Nation. We'll catch you later this week. We out.